Hey there, welcome back. Are you looking to get pre-approved and have no idea what to do or where to start? Have you heard there's a lot of different types of, do you want to get pre-approved, pre-qualified? What's the difference? Well, my name is Adam Walker. I'm your friend in the mortgage business. And if you're looking for the answer to that, you've come to the right place. Uh, this is the second video in our video series for first-time homebuyers. And today we're going to dive into everything you need to know about pre-approvals. Now, if you missed episode one on how to save or how to get a down payment, you can find that in the link below. Now, before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of our mortgage hacks. The first video, like I said, we covered how to save up for a down payment. We included tips like saving for the down payment, uh, looking into a gifted down payment. But today we're going to take this step step further and we're going to talk pre-approvals. Now, I'll be honest, pre-approvals can be a bit confusing even for experienced home buyers and realtors. Some people say you need a pre-qualification. Others say you need a pre-approval. It can be a really, really hard thing to track. But I'm going to tell you the thing. In terms of a pre-approval or pre-qualification, a lot of cases, they're the exact same thing. What really matters is how deep your lender goes into your financial situation. That determines how much you can actually afford. So let's dive into what you need to prepare for a pre-approval and what a real pre-approval actually is. Trust me, by the end of the video, you're going to feel a lot more confident about the process. And I'm even going to share with you how a proper pre-approval can help you in multiple offers. So how do you know if your pre-approval is actually any good? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, It depends on the, the questions that your lender asks you and the documents that they request from you to back up your answers. If you go onto a website and answer a couple questions, or if your lender just asks you how much you can make, how much debt you have before giving you a go ahead to buy a house that's maybe worth $500,000, that's not a great pre-approval. A better pre-approval would come from a mortgage professional that specializes in mortgages and mortgages only. They'll ask you for job letters, bank statements, notice of assessments, tax returns, other documents to verify your income. They're gonna go and review your credit history. Uh, They're gonna go through a complete mortgage application process. Now, if you're worried about what those documents are, I've included a link to a PDF below with all the documents that you're going to need to get started with your pre-approval. Now, the difference between a pre-approval that verifies your documents and one that doesn't can be absolutely huge. We often get clients referred to us that have maybe a pre-approval for $600,000 when we actually look at their situation and they only qualify for $450,000. Um, This happens because that other lender or that website uh, didn't ask for their income. They didn't dig deeper into how that income was, was, was earned. Uh, You know, maybe it included bonuses or overtime or or salary or hourly, you know, how many of those hours are guaranteed? How many bonuses are guaranteed? How long you've been getting them for? It all matters when you do that pre-approval. And I'm going to tell you house hunting, it's hard enough as it is. You don't want to be looking at houses that are outside of your price range and then have to come back to something that's in your price range and try and have it find something that ticks all your boxes. Now, verifying your income. That involves a lot of questions, getting job letters, pay stubs, tax returns. Um, Without all this verification, the pre-approval isn't worth the paper it's written on. So what I'm telling you is quality matters. And it all comes down to verification, verification, verification. When you go and get your pre-approval, expect to start with a mortgage application. Anybody that's going to quote you interest rates without seeing your application first, they're just guessing and they're setting you up for failure. There's a lot of multiple factors that contribute to the pricing of a mortgage and it makes it impossible for brokers, banks, or anybody to quote an interest rate without considering all of these components. These may include what your income looks like, the timing of your purchase, your down payment amount, and your credit score. Relying on a rate website to provide you with an accurate interest rate, I'm telling you, it's just unrealistic. So the first step is to fill out that application. The second step will be to provide all the documents that support the application that you have filled out. So for most people, like I said, that's getting the job letter, the pay stub, um, your, your notice of assessments, all of those documents that we kind of talked about previously from your employer. Now, if your employer is a relatively large company, we're looking for that job letter from the HR department. If it's a smaller department, a smaller company, maybe you can just get that from your direct manager. Now, in terms of submitting the pay stub in your last 45 days, 
The other thing we're going to look at is for your down payment. We need a 90-day bank statement that includes where that down payment is coming from. Now, if it's coming from savings or RSPs, you'll need to provide documentation to support this uh, versus a bank statement showing the deposit from your account into that, de- uh, into that RSPs. If it's from, coming from a, gi- a gifted, we need to see a gift letter from a family member who's providing that down payment as a gift. Um, it's worth noting that you can use a combination. If you want to use savings and a gift and an RSP, you don't have to have it come from all just one source. Um, but you do want to make sure that you have all of the supporting documentation um, if you're using a, co- a combination of all of it. Again, we're looking for a minimum of 5% that we talked about in our saving for a down payment. We also need to make sure that we have the 1.5% saved up for your closing costs. Now, after we prov- gather all of the information, we want to determine your maximum purchase price and provide you with a pre-approval or an email specific or uh, specifying all of those figures. Um, however, there's often conf- confusion regarding who conducts the pre-approval. Right? When you receive a pre-approval, it's from your lender or your bank stating their willingness to work with you as a client. However, if your mortgage is less than 20% down payment and we require insurance from CMAC, SAGEN, or Canada Guarantee, those insurance companies, they don't review your application until you've made the actual offer. Um, so in such pr- cases, your pre-approval only reflects your bank's readiness or your lender's readiness to approve that mortgage. It's crucial to start this process early. One thing that a lot of people don't know is a lot of times your credit report, sometimes there's errors on it. And if we're we're starting to figure out those errors, we don't have time to fix it with an Equifax or a TransUnion in the five-day condition of finance that you might have. So the earlier we can get to some of these mistakes, the easier it's going to make your process. Now, if your income and your credit score are satisfactory, you're in good shape. We can go ahead and we can get started. Now, the other thing you need to know is your pre-approval comes with a rate hold, which protects you from rising rates. However, your rate hold is typically higher than current market rates, and that's because the banks sometimes hedge your interest rate that they're going to offer you. There is, uh, there will be an opportunity to have a lower rate as we get closer to the time that you put in your actual offer. Now, pre-approvals don't typically expire, but rate holds usually will expire after 120 days. So if you're more than four months uh, from the time that you got it pre-approved, you should go back and renew your rate hold. Now, your pre-approval will remain valid as long as interest rates and your borrowing power remain unchanged. If anything changes, such as income or your credit purchases, contact your broker or your bank to update your pre-approval. One of the most common reasons we see pre-approvals become invalid is because people go out and they start buying after uh, they've received their pre-approval. We've seen them buy a car, furniture, um, you know, running up some credit cards. That often affects pre-approvals. I know a lot of people want to get ready for that new house and, and start buying the furniture or the appliances, but wait until we've got the mortgage closed. Now, after obtaining your fully ver- verified pre-approval or pre-qualification, it is time to start searching for a house. One of the things that we do by having a fully um, pre-approved mortgage is multiple offer assistance where we will actually contact the other agent, talk to them about how strong your mortgage pre-approval is and give that seller some added confidence when they're looking to buy their, or where they're looking through multiple offers on who they're going to select. In our next video, we're going to discuss the full mortgage pre-approval. The more full, sorry, the full mortgage approval and how that process works. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get the upcoming video as soon as it's released. Don't forget, hit that like button so you can help the YouTube algorithm and make sure that more people like you can enjoy this. If you're ready to get pre-approved, go to adamwalkermortgages.com and sign up for a strategy call. My team and my preferred partners will give you the local competitive advantage in today's real estate market.